Let me get a cup of coffee. Today's the day we're going to Arizona. But before we get on the road, I just want to explain the new hunting rules for uh, Arizona, especially for the over-the-counter stuff. So there's gonna be some FaceTime right here, some uh, screen time, and some comments me and my buddy Jaime were thinking about how we're gonna hunt since it's both of our first times going after a desert muley. So let's get right into it. All right, let's talk about pricing. So right out the gate, you're gonna be paying $130 for a non-res combo. I'm gonna be talking about non-residents because that's what I am. So $130 for a non-res combo, this is the only hunting license you can buy. And you have to buy this hunting license before you get your over-the-counter deer tag. So your over-the-counter deer tag is $300. Sorry for the footsteps. My dogs are now, of course, drinking water because they always do this. One sec. One dog's done, the other starts. Okay, so um, the big things that have changed now are the over-the-counter uh, hunting process, hunting tags, right? You can no longer buy them from a third party. And third party means like going into a store and getting them. You can only buy the over-the-counter tags online. And those went on sale December 1st. 2022 and, by, and the make, by the making of this video, they're sold out. So sorry, better luck next year, unfortunately. It's the only way I can really play it. We're gonna go to the screen because now we're gonna talk about quota control and how Arizona is doing it this year. It's the first time that they've ever done it. And it's it's interesting because you can't just go to any unit now and go harvest a uh, deer, whitetail or a mule deer. You have to make sure that there's still quotas available. So let's go from here to the screen and I'll explain a little more. All right, here we are on the Arizona Fish and Wildlife page. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to hunting. And as I was uh, explaining, so there's a new tag limit for each, or quota limit, deer limit for each area or zone you hunt in Arizona. So this is super important and you have to check this. I mean, I guess you can check it every day. I forget the reporting requirement. I know after you harvest your deer, you have 48 hours to report it, but I don't know how often they update those numbers um, in the system. So you're gonna go to harvest reporting, this i'm sure there's another way but deer mandatory harvest report and i'm going to click on this guy right here harvest and limit status so this will take you to this page uh harvest tracking we're on deer tracking so as you see for example unit 3b right so what this is explaining is that these were the open dates for unit 3b the type of deer is any antler deer so that is either a coos deer or a mule deer or i guess they called a white tail deer um, the harvest limit for the zone is five, five were harvested, so now this area is closed for hunting. If we scroll down somewhere else, area 23, here are the dates. So they are allowing 40 deer to be killed in this area, 35 have been harvested, so you still have five remaining. You need to check this as often as possible, even if you're in the area hunting, you still need to check it. I forget how often they up update this, but this is definitely the tool you need to use to make sure you don't do anything illegal and accidentally harvest an animal. Of course there'd be a crow, why wouldn't there be a crow? This is whatever I was saying, check this out. It's right up here, harvesttacktracking.azgfd.gov. Um, we have moved to the garage, all right. So where can you hunt with um, with the OTC tag in Arizona? Pretty much the whole damn state, really. Uh, we were, I'm gonna tell you what we were originally gonna do. We were originally gonna hunt the Yuma Proving Grounds. And the reason for that was because I hunt military installations in California and it just makes it so much easier. They're operated by a company called iSportsman who fun fact is sponsoring this whole series. Uh, thank you so much iSportsman, truly blessed for that. Um, but if you don't know about them, they have this thing called iSportsman ARX, and it is the coolest like land management tool for people who lease their land for hunting and stuff like that, where it just like, it takes all the stress away. You could set up uh, check and checkout times, uh, harvest reporting data, um, vehicle registration, who's on your land and all that stuff. So I'll leave a link for that in the description. Make sure you check it out. That's something you're interested in. So with that being said, we were originally gonna hunt the Yuma Proving Grounds. I'm gonna take a seat here. Um, you're gonna hunt the Yuma Proving Grounds for the sole fact that through the website, the uh, Sportsman website, they give you so much information. Like um, they literally tell you where all the water guzzlers are and stuff like that. But due to legal reasons and filming permissions, we're unfortunately not uh, able to. Luckily though, I got on the phone with a guy called Daniel, wildlife biologist. So that's a big tip. If you decide to go hunt Arizona next year or whenever tags are open again, try to get in touch with a wildlife biologist for whatever district you're hunting. And they're like, Daniel was giving me all the info. Anything I asked for, he was, 
willing to provide. Like he literally told me where to go hunt and where not to go hunt. So that's a big tip. Contact a wildlife wildlife biologist, tell them the area you're interested in hunting, and hopefully they could provide some type of information. But one thing he definitely said was to uh, get high and glass wide, which we're gonna take into we're gonna bleh, we are going to take into consideration. I'm not gonna lie, guys, I filmed this like 30 times, so I'm kind of getting sick of talking. <sighs> Glass high, get high, glass wide. That's what I'm saying. So we're gonna go to this uh, computer screen right now just so you can get a general idea of what I'm trying to say. Okay, here we are on Google Earth. And this is what me and Jaime are kind of thinking about um, where, like how we're gonna hunt this. So here you have, you know, a bunch of washes and some flats. You know, this right here indicates a wash in my head. Always be cracked. So what we're thinking is, we're gonna hit up one of the edges of something. So you're gonna zoom in, there's this random patch of green. Looks like someone's property. Or you someone's property. And of course my dog will bark anyway. So what we're gonna do is, I like Google Earth by the way, just cause it gives you so much detail. You gotta double click this boy and get that angle. So if, I was, if we were hunting this giant wash, I would try to get on the edge of one of these, um, mini mountains big hills we'll call them hills right and then as you can see if you post up right here on the top remember double click and rotate you can see all of this land naturally though um, the higher you get the deeper into cuts you can see so this wash right here this little um excuse my terminology it's a little dried up creek i guess we'll call it 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 cuts at an angle as you could kind of see you see how it slopes down and slopes up if you're not high enough you're not going to be able to see into it and from what i've been reading and uh listening to this is their travel routes because it keeps them you know keeps them out of dodge i was cool how to do that whoa okay <clears throat> so this is just how i would look so i would start dropping pins so if i was going to hunt this area i'd drop a pin right here and another good thing to do is if you start in the middle somewhere and you you know double click and you look you can see what hills are around you that are kind of in a general area so you know you could glass from so this dude right here i mean this would be a good spot because you're right in the middle and you have a 360 view so if you're out here with a homie or something like you know someone could post on one side someone post on the other side and you could cover the whole thing looks like there's a road that's running right here too so i don't know if it would be the best idea really don't know but i never look at this area, but I'm definitely going to now check if this is BLM. But this is the mindset we're going into it. But um, through looking and, you know, doing a lot of research, um, like I said, Google Earth is like my go-to. We've been dropping pins just in these general areas. Um, a couple of uh, other desert mule deer hunters that I've reached out to says um, it can't just all be flat. There needs to be some type of vertical. So I'm going to use that kind of mentality. But also, no, you don't need to get on the tip, tip, tip very top of these hills but this would look this would be another good good spot from you know just a quick glance um you know just get on one of these edges and then now you have a 270 degree view basically of the area so that's the mindset we're using going into this we'll see how it turns out like i said in the beginning of this video take everything i say with a grain of salt since this is the first time i'm doing it but from just listening to other people who do hunt deserts everyone says get high get up there early and then in the middle of the day come down and start trying to cut some tracks so that's the mentality we're going in with so that's the general mindset me and Jaime are going in there. We have a bunch of pins dropped on like uh, big hills, uh, mountain ranges, cliffs, stuff like that, just so we could glass as much land as possible. Next step now is to get all this into my Subaru. Um, taking the Subaru, Jaime's gonna meet me out there with, with his Tacoma. Uh, probably gonna use his Tacoma driving around the desert actually just for uh, lift purposes and off-road capability. I mean, you know, my Subaru could go pretty much anywhere, but yeah. Uh, other than that, if you see this logo in your face right now, that is going to indicate the Arizona hunting series. So if you want to watch the series and how I do and how me and Jaime figure this out, hopefully, and hopefully see deer, step one is to find deer, uh, stay tuned. And um, anytime you see that in the thumbnail, know it's in association with the Arizona uh, hunting mule deer series, mule deer hunting series. That's it, guys. I'm done talking, done rambling. Uh, see you guys there in Arizona. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll talk to you guys soon. Peace.